Hi there, I'm Joe, I work on Pixel Art and Comics, and today we're going to be going over A-Sprite, we're going to be doing some Pixel Quickies, something to help you get moving and grooving a little faster in A-Sprite, and uh, help speed up your workflow. So, first thing we're going to be going over is the flip. So, Shift plus H will give you a horizontal flip, and Shift plus V will give you a vertical flip. Obviously, these are both handy, whether you're working on a sprite, you're working on illustration. Essentially, this helps see your piece from a different angle and help you notice if there's any issues off proportion-wise or something just seems off. So next up, we have we have this symmetry tool. So symmetry is really good. This is a big one to help kick your workflow into gear. Uh, it's really helpful if you're doing like a straight on portrait, you're working on some items, and it's also just really helpful to keep your proportions in check in case you're not, like if you want something non-asymmetric, this is your way to do it. So how we're gonna do that is if you go up into view, you will see the option symmetry options. So once you click that, you'll get these three boxes right here. So just as before with horizontal and vertical, uh, we'll get horizontal and vertical symmetry. So what this last one here is, is the symmetry options. So I'll leave horizontal on and what will happen is sometimes you'll turn on your symmetry and your it'll just be way off in your canvas and you'll go to draw and you'll find it way later. So what's nice about symmetry options here is it'll reset to center and once you hit reset to center you'll be good to go locked in the center of your canvas for some perfect symmetry. So next up, we have changing your background. So essentially what'll happen when you're working in A-Sprite and you're working just straight out the gate, you'll have that, the gray on gray checkerboard. And say you're working on something that is gray. You're working, you're, work, you're making some gears, you're making, uh, you're making everybody's favorite Pokemon, a Magnemite, Magna, Magnemite, Magna, Magnemite. And uh, so essentially you can't see your sprite because it is blending right into the background. So what we can do to fix this remedy here is if we go up into edit and preferences, we'll have all this good stuff here. There's so much, I strongly recommend digging through this, but for right now we're gonna go into background. And in background, you can see not only your size, you can change the size of these checkerboards, but you can adjust your colors and you can do it through what you have in your color palette or you can just you can just go off the cuff and change it to whatever. And what's really nice about this specifically is you change it, you get your sprite where you need to go, apply, you do your work, you can come back here and click reset and you have the classic gray. Uh, just a little bonus because we're in here, if you go under theme, this is something that gets brought up a lot, uh, there are a lot of different a sprite themes you can download. Uh, something that I use a lot is the Dark Mort HD theme. It uh, kind of no, 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 A sprite, don't adjust scaling. Uh, the the Dark Mort HD theme. It's clean. It's nice. It gives a very big Photoshop feel. Shout outs to Mort Mort for making this. I'm sure if you guys are looking at A sprite stuff, you've seen his it's pixels. Really good dude. Um, but for now, we're going to leave it on default just in case for anybody who's just hopping in blind so everything feels familiar and good. So moving right along, on to the next one, we've got changing your brush size. I know that this doesn't sound that all remarkable, but when you are working on a project, you're working on a sprite, and you need to adjust your, your, your brush size, uh, having to go up to the top here and adjust by clicking is very tedious. And being able to switch it on the fly like this with just a, a, a button press is way nice. So plus on your numpad or your keyboard, on the left side of your keyboard will increase your brush size and the minus key uh, will decrease it. So for this one is control U, which brings up your hue and saturation sliders. So this can get pretty extensive, but for the short and sweet of it, this is the this is the best way to do it. So hue will adjust your colors. This is good for adjusting your, your sprite if you want to play around with some different colors. So saturation, same thing. Uh, instead of colors though, we've got um, how much color, whether it be very dull or very bright. Next on our list here, we've got the levels. And the levels, it's, I bet you guys are seeing a pattern going on here. So the pattern essentially with levels now is that you've got uh, dark to light. And this is really helpful for 
if you're trying to just add some shadows or anything like that. And then last but not least, on the list here, we have alpha. So this will show your transparency, your opacity. Uh, you can also do this through your cell, but this is also nice if you just want one particular thing on your cell. This one here is creating a tag in animation. So we're gonna be going into a couple animation things here in A-Sprite. So uh, we're gonna go a little behind the scenes. You guys are gonna see my very messy, very, very dirty timeline here. So if you hit the tab key, if you don't have your timeline up here, tab will toggle that on and off. So if we zoom out here and we pull this up, so we've got all these different tags here and that's how I've been toggling between all these here. So. Uh, how we can do this is if you, like this says, if you control click and right click throughout your different frames here, that will pull up your options. So we're going to do just that. So if you click on all of these here and control click them, you can go to new tag, make sure your, your from to are all set. You can change it to whatever color you want. If you're feeling squirrely, just click okay. And boom, you got yourself a tag. This is really helpful for if you're you're working on a bunch of different animations in one file and you can you're able to just jump between them in your file so next up we have the animation keys on the bottom of the timeline here i think these guys are pretty self-explanatory but i think they're always good to go over um just because of the fact that we've got your your scruff forward, your scruff left and right, the play button, and then the guys on the end is actually the home and the end. So essentially to kick back to the beginning of your timeline and the end of your timeline. And with that, you can see that you can scruff through these. You can use your, oh, your carrot keys and your arrow keys to be able to scuff through frames. Next up, since we're already down in the timeline, figure we might as well get, get into some more nitty gritty here. Um, our next one here is we've got our visibility. This will turn off on in all layers, which, you know, obviously that's very handy. If you have something like the, the mess of layers that I have going on here, uh, this is really nice to just turn, turn everything off and find the layers you're looking for. Next up, we've got our lock. So essentially with this, this is, I mean, Pretty self-explanatory, but again, uh, this is helpful for if you have a background layer and you want to not mess with it, not move it, locking that frame will keep everything in check. The next one is contiguous. I don't use this one too often because I'm used to locking it, uh, but this one's good for static sprites, things you won't be animating, and um, this is usually like a background center thing. And now here, this guy, this is this is the, the thumbnail, and um, so if we, we open this back up here and and we go to it, you can see that we get thumbnails. So obviously this is we're gonna have to pull this up just just a smidgen, but as you can see, if we if we head over here and turn on the thumbnail size, you can see that you get some thumbnails in your timeline. And if you don't have a million layers, it's very helpful. It's really nice to be able to see what you're working with. Um, Something else too with this is this also being in this menu allows you to change your position of your timeline. And this is really nice for Photoshop users and you can just pop this to the right and be able to, you know, feels a little more like home. But in terms of animation, if you have something say like a hundred frames of animation, uh, it's really, it's, it's a lot easier to just have everything on the bottom. So this next one here we have is onion skinning. So for onion skinning, essentially what that's gonna do is it'll show the frames before and after the cells that you have selected. So as you can see here for this little sprite that I've got of uh, myself, uh, it is down then up, pointing upwards. So if you're doing like a, a walk cycle or like an attack animation, this, these will really help with building up and uh, just seeing how you need to make your adjustments and get it going. Uh, also, with being on the animation, uh, so we've got our timeline here on the bottom. There is a little button right down here to show preview. And this is really handy, this guy right here. So that'll pop up and it's super helpful for not only seeing readability of your sprites because this is at the size, the actual size of what you're working with. And this will show you the size of it 
and for animations especially, see how it's already playing automatically? This will give you a preview of your animation. So not only are you seeing how the sprite reads, but also how your animation's reading. Next up we have Shift-O. So essentially, this one's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, this one will give you the outline tool. So if you want to just put a quick outline on your on your sprite, I used to do this manually until I found this out. Uh, this one definitely helps save up the speed up the workflow, and there are different options here that you can play with. Uh, something I really use this for, besides a whole outline overall, is adding a drop shadow onto your onto your text or onto said object, and uh, helps helps give it a nice pop. On to color palettes. So this is something that I hear folks talk about a lot with pixel art is, uh, and I'm, I struggle with this, with this myself, is choosing the right colors. Well, the beauty of this is a sprite comes packed with a bunch of color palettes. And all you gotta do is just hover above your colors here and uh, you got your preset colors and there are so many that you can choose from. Uh, search option, I'm always a big sucker of the NES palette myself but you can just double click that boy and load right up. And also you can also import colors if you need them. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful at all, or if there are any other tips you'd like me to cover or share some yourself, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. As I'm sure this isn't your first time on YouTube, doing the like, the comment, the subscribe, all that stuff makes a difference on here. Other than that, you guys can catch me pushing pixels over on twitch.tv slash cup of joe. I'll have my other socials down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Okay.